not, I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things and I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case, open and shut No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut Today we'll go bird watching, tomorrow we'll catch toads The next day we'll take photographs of bugs along the road I never get the feeling that I'm in a rut that's why I'm a nature nut Well, I'm a nature nut I'm not afraid to admit I'm wild about the wild things And I'm proud of it I'm just a simple case Open and shut No doubt about it I'm a nature nut Hello there, nature nuts What do you think of this beautiful terrarium? You know what I've done here? recreated what I think would be a perfect habitat for one of the most famous species of insects in the world, the American cockroach. And today, we're going to devote this episode to the subject of household bugs. We might as well start with cockroaches because they are the most famous of all household bugs. Did you know that there are about 4,000 different species of cockroaches in the world, and most of those live their lives quite peacefully away from people in tropical forests? There's only a handful of species of cockroaches that get into houses, and here in North America, there are only four species that we regularly find in human dwellings. So they're not all out to get us, and even though we all know that cockroaches are bringers of filth and disease and corruption and putrefaction and all those sorts of terrible things. The truth of the matter is they are actually rarely, very rarely implicated in the spread of disease. They're actually quite harmless little creatures. We just don't like them because we don't like sharing our houses and because they scurry a lot and have, uh, you know, spiny legs and long feelers. We just don't like them. There are some bugs that you just plain don't want in your house. One of the biggest roaches is Blabberus giganteus from South America, three inches or seven centimeters long. Okay, well, you know, Whereas cockroaches are in your house to eat your food, there are other sorts of bugs that are in your house to eat you, or at least to drink your blood. And I'm talking about things like fleas and lice and uh, occasionally ticks, things like that. Some of those can be serious pests because they spread diseases and uh, that's not good. But around here, the most, uh, most common blood-sucking critter is the bed bug and bed bugs although they are terribly annoying they actually don't spread diseases generally so they're not that bad but here's a little tip on how to figure out if you've got bed bugs set your alarm for about 1 30 a.m and when it goes off you wake up you put on your headlamp or grab a flashlight and you start looking around for bed bugs because they're not staying in the bed with you. They go off and hide and then they come back when they figure you're asleep. Then you find one. As soon as you find it, always collect a specimen, you know, so you've got a reference specimen. I've got a reference specimen here. I did not collect this specimen myself. And just for the record, there are no bed bugs in this bed. I just checked. But have a look here. This is what a bed bug looks like. It's a reddish brown, very flattened insect, no wings, and they have a little tiny sucking mouth part that uh, is what they stick into you to drink your blood. Always collect a specimen, by the way. That's the easiest way to identify any of your household bugs. Hope you don't have them. I don't have them. None in this bed. Just for the record, this is a bed bug free bed. All right, well, night night, sleep tight. Don't let the you know what bite. And we'll see you in the morning at breakfast. Ow! <laughs> okay, that's what I was expecting. There is another group of household 
critters that we call stored product pests. And many of them are beetles, and they live in your stored products, particularly things that are, uh, you know, made of cereals or grains or flour or things like that. Now, these little ones are larder beetles, Dermestes lardarius, and that beetle will eat just about anything in your house. It's a very, very common pest. Uh, they're, you know, they're pretty easy to recognize with that little sort of grayish band through the oval, elongate oval body. The larvae are, well, they're kind of hairy looking things. They look a lot like any other beetle larva. You know, it's like a little hairy caterpillar thing crawling around in your house. And they're not very good and they're not easy to get rid of. But they're very common. You've probably got them in your house and, you know, that's just the way it goes. Larder beetles are a stored product pest. Another one I've got just happened. I'm not going to eat these. This is a uh, little jar of, have a look here, flower beetles, confused flower beetles, and they especially like flour. I don't know why they're called confused flower beetles. They don't look confused. They look like they know exactly what they're doing. Maybe they only live in confused flour, but then how do you tell if the flour is confused? Good question. So, we have discussed insects that infest your food stores, insects that drink your blood, insects that eat your garbage. How about insects that want to eat your house? Hmm. Weevils are often found in stored products too, and they can be recognized by their long snouts. You ever notice how old wooden buildings just simply fall apart after a while? On the outside, the wind, the rain, the sunlight's wearing them down. Inside, they'll often have bugs working on them too. Now, I know you're thinking about termites right now. I wish I could show you termites, but we're doing this show in Edmonton, Alberta, one of the few cities in North America with absolutely no termites, so I can't show you any termites. I can tell you about carpenter ants, though. Carpenter ants are big ants. They have blocky, kind of rectangular heads, and they're just like termites in the sense that they eat wood. They have little microbes living in their guts that break down the wood, and they're able to eat solid wood that way. If you have carpenter ants in your house, you'll notice little piles of sawdust here and there. As they excavate their galleries, they pile the sawdust outside, usually, you know, against a wall, something like that. That's your cue to call the pest control people, because carpenter ants are not a good thing to have in your wooden house. They really shouldn't be called carpenter ants. They don't do any carpentry. They are anti-carpenter ants. See this little pile of sawdust here? That's a sure sign of carpenter ants. In fact, at this very spot a few months ago, I came over and I cleared away a much bigger pile of sawdust. And the whole idea was to see if they would produce new sawdust. That would tell you that they're still in there working. And there's the new sawdust for sure. Ooh, bad news, bad news. Nice new cobwebs too. Dead sow bug. This is a very buggy place. You know, if you start thinking like a nature nut, you're gonna realize eventually that not all the bugs in your house are doing any harm. There are lots of insects, especially uh, insects that live in soil, or originally lived in soil in the wild, that are simply scavenging. They're scavenging on all sorts of odd things in your house that you personally do not want to eat. And a lot of these insects that you might find on a potted plant will also live in a composter. This is a worm composter here. Oh, and before we take the lid off, those are fungus gnats. Fungus gnats are small flies. They look a bit like a mosquito, but they don't bite people. They don't hurt plants. They simply feed in the soil and, uh, and they don't do any damage to anything. These ones are mating. And generally, if you find little tiny flies in your house that look sort of like this, they are gonna be fungus gnats, nothing to worry about. Let's take the lid off here. 
Now in here, besides the worms, we also have a whole bunch of creatures that naturally live in the soil of the forest floor. So we've got snails in here, we've got some little reddish mites, and most of the other creatures are tiny little insects called springtails. Tiny little primitive insects in the sense that they haven't changed much over hundreds of millions of years. They are simply part of the process of breaking organic matter down into soil. Having them in your composter is perfectly good. Having them in your potted plant does no harm. They're innocuous. They're even kind of interesting because they have a little lever under their body that they use to spring themselves into the air. Hey, that's cool. Even a tiny little bug like that has a neat feature. But let's have a look down here. I know it's tough to get excited about springtails, but what about silverfish? Now, silverfish have a very bad reputation. Most people think if you've got silverfish in your house, uh, it's terribly, terribly bad. They're not that bad. Now, this is a box of old books. I know there are some silverfish in here somewhere. There you go. Silverfish are also insects. They're not fish, of course. They have a slightly scaly look to them. But if you look at them closely, you'll see that they have uh, long antennae out the front, three pairs of legs, very streamlined body, a, uh, a set of feelers at the tip of the abdomen. We call them cerci, and those uh, feelers have a beautiful sort of three-pronged arrangement to them. Many uh, um, members of this group are also called bristle tails for that reason. What they're doing, they are eating anything that has starchiness to it. They'll eat, I mean, they'll eat spilled oatmeal if you're the kind of person who spills oatmeal. They'll also eat the glue in uh, wallpaper paste, starch-based wallpaper paste. And the reason they're in this box of books is because the glue in the binding of old books, not new books, uh, old books has some starch in it, so they'll eat the glue in the binding of the books. They'll also eat the paper in old books because the sizing in the paper is also starchy, and uh, if you leave a lot of books uh, down in boxes in your basement, eventually the silverfish might do damage to the books. So in that sense, they're harmful, but they certainly don't spread any diseases or do anything terrible like that. This book seems all right. Oh, look at that. There's a stamp. They will even eat the glue on the back of stamps. It's edible. I mean, you know, it's got a nice taste to it. We all know that. But it also has some nutrition in it. That's why uh, postal workers don't have to eat as much as the rest of us because they're licking stamps all day. They get a lot of their calories that way. Just kidding. No offense if you're a postal worker. A house without bugs, when you get right down to it, is probably either polluted or dangerously radioactive. Well, I came in late last night. My baby gave me a great big hug. <laughs> well, I came in from a party late last night. My baby said, welcome home, you great big love. <laughs> but there was a cockroach in the bathroom, and I knew our house had been bugged. Well, I woke up the next morning, and I said, honey, won't you pour me some cereal flakes? <laughs> I woke up refreshed the next morning, and I said, honey, won't you pour me some cereal flakes? Just a little bitty bowl of flakes. <laughs> but there was flower beetles swimming in the milk, my friend. Oh, I had a sudden tummy ache. <laughs> Look out. You know my house is bugs. Got my beetles in the rug. Silver fish in the dishes. Don't leave that bathroom drain of blood. How spicy. <laughs> well, I went down to the basement Just trying to find some solitude Oh, I went down into the basement Way down in altitude 
The place was crawling with the creepies, and I know the basement was bugged too. Oh no, look out, have mercy, good grief. I lay down on the Chesterfield, and I stared up at the light. <laughs> oh yes, I lay down on the sofa or the couch or whatever you want to call it, and I stared up at the dried moth in the fixture of the light. I figured these bugs ain't really gonna hurt me. <laughs> so everything is gonna be all right. Oh, that's a relief. <laughs> so I crawled into the bathtub and I poured myself a bath. In all those luxurious bubbles, I could now unwind at last. And then at once I saw it. It's the biggest I ever seen. It crawled out of my slippers and said, pass me a magazine. My house is bugged. Carpet beetles in the rug. A silver fish is in the dishes. No, oh, don't leave that bathroom drain unplugged. No, put the drain plug back in. Oh, look how we're gonna get bugged again here. That moisty. Ow! Did you ever think about the fact that your basement is kind of like a warm, dry cave? There are many creatures that think exactly that way. I've been looking for cave crickets, or camel crickets, they're also called. Haven't found one. Had one in my own basement a couple of months back. I should have kept it. Rats. Let's see what else we can find here. Ah, spider. Basements are generally full of spiders. Nothing to worry about. This one has a very shiny bulbous abdomen. That's the same basic shape as a black widow spider, but black widows are black with a bright red hourglass shaped marking on their underside. This one is brownish with yellow blotchiness on the underside. So that one is not a black widow. It's not dangerous. I can't tell you exactly what kind of spider it is. There are many, many species of spiders that can get into basements, but there's a house spider over here and that's one I can tell you about. So let's go have a look at that. Ew, lots of old webs here. Now, where was that spider I saw before? Oh, there she is, right there. Now have a look at that web. It's a nice sheet web, flat. It goes to a funnel-shaped hiding spot for the spider. And this is a female house spider, Tegenaria domestica. And they're found in basements, not only all through North America, but really all around the world. It's a perfectly harmless little spider. And it's just sitting there waiting for something to eat. They have to be able to go for long, long periods without any food. And of course, they don't get any water down here either. So they're dependent on the body fluids of their prey for water. Very, uh, you know, tough little critters. If you look around your basement, you'll probably find some females in webs like this. Uh, people also see the males. The males are more inclined to wander looking for females and there's a second species of house spider the um, tegenaria gigantea great big thing when a male giant house spider walks through your rumpus room uh, you notice it in general they're not harmful at all in fact they're good things to have in your basement but there's a third species that has been introduced on the west coast these are all european species originally by the way Tigenaria agrestis that can give you a very bad bite, so you really shouldn't handle any of these spiders just in case. But for the most part, of course, they're just waiting for other bugs. Uh, this one has, looks like either a mosquito or a crane fly wing in the web, and that's just a bug that got into the house by accident. A lot of that sort of thing happens too. In fact, why don't we talk about that next? <laughs> Watch where you put your hands when moving old boxes in the basement, and you'll avoid being bitten by spiders. You know, for many bugs, a house is like a great big trap. It seems like a warm, welcoming place. They work their way in through, you know, an open window or a crack in the foundation, and then they can't find their way out. Like this spider here. 
that gets into the house, it's wandering around, and finally it finds itself in the bathtub. The bathtub is a giant pitfall trap. It's trying to find its way out, but the sides are slippery, and that's why you find spiders in your tub. They don't come up out of the drain. Now, sometimes they'll go take refuge in the drain when they realize they can't get out, but they don't come up through the drain. Let's dispense with that myth altogether. They're not following the drain system from house to house and doing things like that. You don't have to worry. You don't have to get paranoid about your drain. It's full of water. It's not a place for a spider. You ever see those magazine ads for little ladders that you can put in your bathtub so the spiders can climb out? That's a nice thing to do. Kind of a humane way to treat your spiders. There are other insects that enter your house because they think it's a good place to hibernate, to sleep off the winter, and it just so happens that there's a box elder bug up there that is doing that very thing. It, uh, well, it's not going to have a good hibernation because it's too warm in here. It has to get cool for bugs to hibernate properly. That box elder bug, it's not going to have a good winter. Sometimes you find them, you know, waking up in the middle of December or January, buzzing around your house. You think you've got a terrible infestation. Really, all you've got is a bunch of very upset box elder bugs or ladybugs or other uh, sorts of bugs that, uh, like I say, just want to use it as a wintering spot. It's a huge topic, house bugs, and we've only covered a tiny fraction of the species that get into houses, but we're also running out of time. So. I think we got to sign off now, and I have one more thing to tell you. I promised my wife and everyone else I work with that uh, I would mention that this is not our house, it wasn't our basement. In fact, uh, it was a rented basement, yeah, studio basement uh, that we made it look like it was infested. In there. Maybe we built it from scratch. No one lives here, it's totally abandoned. No one whose name follows in the credits has any bugs in their house whatsoever. They're all nature nuts, mind you. And so am I, and I hope you are too. See you again soon. Not a bad job, eh? Especially detailed to make it look just a little bit old. Same time each and every week, uncensored and uncut. No doubt about it, I'm a nature nut. <laughs>